Hello internet and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. Today we're going to be taking a look into the mind of those that have committed unspeakable horrors which more often than not results in the loss of human life. My name's Jack Finch and I'll be your host as we take a look at 10 scary confessions caught on tape. You see Bill, I knew a week before she died I was going to kill her. She went out to a party, she got soused. Before we begin, make sure to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and go ahead and share it with whoever you think would find it interesting. Infamous criminals have had a strange relationship with film and television and the majority of notorious killers and predators almost crave the limelight when on screen. It's led to some pretty shocking moments for journalism and criminal psychology and sometimes they just can't help but speak the truth. First up at number 10, we've got Mark Chopper Reed. Mark Brandon Chopper Reed was a notorious figure in the Australian criminal underworld. He became famous after his autobiographical book, How to Shoot Friends and Influence People, inspired the film Chopper, which was released in 2000 with Eric Banner playing the titular role. Reed was sentenced to 23 years in jail for a variety of insane crimes, varying from armed robbery to a Assault, and Chopper Reed was also the key suspect in a string of unsolved murders. Well, in October of 2013, Mark Chopper Reed died of liver cancer, but just before his death, he sat down with an Australian film crew for an interview on a national news channel. During the show, he coolly and calmly revealed to journalists that he'd been responsible for four murders. Don't question me about my bloody well word, that's all I'm saying to you, that's it. Four is all you're getting, and that four, that's, that's it. Four, that's it. That's it. I haven't killed any more than that. He then went on to recount three separate shootings and an incident where he hung a child killer in his jail cell. When asked about how he felt, Chopper Reed showed no remorse, saying he felt absolutely nothing at all. Next up at number nine, we have Israel Keys. I would let them come to me. This remote area. In 2012, American serial killer Israel Keys was caught by police after a string of horrific crimes that dated back as early as 1996. After police took him into custody, they brought him espresso, cigars, bagels, and the occasional candy bar in a tactic to make him feel like he was still in control. And that's when he started talking. Police interviewed him for dozens of hours between April and October of 2012, where he recounted in detail the chilling crimes that he'd committed. After being held in custody awaiting trial in Anchorage, Alaska, he committed suicide. At number eight, we have Melissa Miller. Oftentimes, it's the most brazen people that you have to be wary of. Such is the case with then girlfriend of Annie Meyer, Melissa Miller, a woman from Wheat Ridge, Colorado. In 2013, Melissa Miller pleaded guilty to the second degree murder of her roommate and girlfriend, Leanne Annie Meyer. So we were just kind of walking, and she poked at me, and I just turned with the walking stick. That's reaction and hit her. Miller claimed that after leaving her girlfriend for dead, she later returned to the scene but couldn't find her body. Police believed that Annie tragically died of an animal attack or exposure. Miller was sentenced to 20 years in prison. And coming in next at number seven, we have Daniel Wozniak. Born in 1984, Daniel Patrick Wozniak was an amateur actor from Southern California who was down on his look and a little bit short on money. While in May 2010, Wozniak murdered two people as part of a plan to steal money from one of the victims. At the time of the murders, Wozniak was in huge debt and was facing eviction from the apartment that he shared with then fiance, Rachel May Buffet. And his intention was to use the stolen money to pay for his upcoming wedding and honeymoon with her. Wozniak murdered his neighbor and friend, army veteran Samuel Hur, who was 26 at the time, and his college friend, Juri Kabushi who was 23. Wozniak's intention was to stage the murder and then frame her as the culprit of the crime. Well, he was sentenced to capital punishment in September 2016 at San Quentin State Prison. Next at number six, we have Sean Vincent Gillis. Between 1994 and 2003, in the Baton Rouge area of Louisiana, American serial killer Sean Vincent Gillis stalked, kidnapped, and murdered eight women. 
I've been doing this since 1978. And you're one of the best, if not the best I've ever seen. In 2004, he was arrested without incidents at his home residence. He was charged with three counts of first degree murder and three counts of what is dubbed as ritualistic acts. However, after thorough police investigation, more attention was paid to the case and some unsolved cold cases of murdered women in the Louisiana area. Eventually, Gillis confessed to five more separate murders. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Coming in at number five, we have Geordie Brooke. In 2014, Australian TV news cameraman Peter Steer was flagged down at the side of the road on an Australian highway. What happened next was pretty crazy. My name's Geordie Brooke. I'm full uh, of What's up, police? And, uh done an extremely bad thing. The man who had been on the run confesses to him that he just killed his girlfriend. The Channel 7 News cameraman found Brooke at the side of the road in floods of tears and covered in blood after his motorbike had broken down. He then confesses that he's done an extremely bad thing and Steer quickly called the police. But after having a lapse in judgment and a change of mind, the crazed man pointed a gun at Steer, stole his car, and then sped off down the highway. Police chased in hot pursuit before Brooke crashed into a road sign outside of a petrol station and then hurtled into a gas tanker. Brooke was charged with attempted murder, armed robbery, as well as a string of other crimes. Coming in at number four, we have the BTK Killer. Dennis Rader, also known as the BTK Killer or the BTK Strangler, is an infamous American serial killer that committed his hideous reign of crime between 1974 and 1991, where he killed 10 people in Sedgwick County, Kansas. The BTK Killer was known for his particular style of confession, sending anonymous taunting letters to police and newspapers describing his horrific crimes in very thorough detail. Well, after 10 years of silence, the BTK killer resumed his taunting, which inevitably led to his arrest in 2005. I thought she was down. Then I strangled uh, uh, Josephine, thought she was down. And then I went over to Junior and put the bag on his head. Dennis Rader is currently serving 10 consecutive life sentences at El Dorado Correctional Facility in Kansas. Next up at number three, David Tarloff. Go there, get his money. I was gonna leave him there. I had this hammer, I was gonna hit him. I was up, I was up mad, I didn't wanna hurt him. I was gonna tie him up and scare him. In 2008, David Tarloff, a man with severe schizophrenia, bludgeoned and stabbed a psychologist to death during a robbery that went wrong. Catherine Foggy, a doctor who worked in the mental health field at her New York office, was working alone one night doing paperwork. Then, just as she began to leave, David Tarloff ran into the building, attacking the doctor, stabbing her in the head, face, and chest. Dr. Foggy was tragically declared dead at the scene, with her colleague, Dr. Shinback, left critically injured. Well, David Tarloff was found guilty of murder after several mistrials spanning from 2010, where his defense of insanity was rejected and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Next up at number two, Jared Murray. Never have the words yes ma'am had such a chilling effect. Twistedly dubbed the thrill killer, Jared Murray allegedly told police that he thought about killing someone for several weeks. They're telling me not to kill him. To make him feel more comfortable, I unloaded the clip, unloaded the bullet from the chamber, handed them over to him, and that in 2012, Murray was charged with first degree murder and the potential death penalty after he led fellow college student Gennaro Sanchez to an isolated area where he then murdered him. Sanchez repeatedly pled for his life to be spared after Jared Murray had shot him once in the head and once again as he attempted to get away. The lack of any kind of emotion with Jared Murray is the stuff of nightmares and he told police that he wanted to experience what killing someone felt like. He was found not guilty of murder by reason of insanity, but cannot be released into society unless a judge agrees he is no longer a danger. And finally, at our number one spot, we have Ed Kemper. Ed Kemper, aka the co-ed killer, is one of America's most prolific serial killers to date. But I was losing a grasp on something that was too violent to keep inside forever as I'm sitting there with a severed head in my hand, talking to it, or looking at it, 
and I'm about to go crazy, literally. I'm about to go completely flywheel loose and just fall apart. At the age of 24, Ed Kemper murdered his own mother, as well as his own paternal grandparents. Kemper is most notorious for the level of savagery that his crimes involve, oftentimes involving cannibalism and necrophilia. Throughout his life in prison, Ed Kemper was used as a test subject for the FBI's Behavioral Analyst Unit, aka the BAU, a crack squad that would delve deep into the minds of serial killers throughout America. Many of his crimes have been documented by Kemper himself through extensive research tapes and documents. Well, Kemper brutally murdered a total of 10 people, and he was sentenced to 8 life sentences at the California Medical Facility. And he remains there to this day. Well, that's all we've got time for today, folks. You've been watching Top 5 Scary Videos. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and a little comment in the box down below. As always, I've been your host, Jack Finch, and until next time, take it easy.